All right, today we're looking at how to reset or get rid of this steering lock warning light. People seem to have this problem on all of the BMWs around the year 2006, 7, 8. It's caused by a couple of things, maybe in combination. The battery getting a bit old, so the voltage is a little bit less. And possibly the solenoid and steering lock getting a bit old and maybe gumming up. The grease getting a bit more solid. Uh, both of those things tend to slow down the operation of the steering lock solenoid. And because it's going a little bit slower, the ECU detects that it's going slower and um, exceeds a particular preset time limit. And once it's done, that it triggers a flag and then counts that up to a certain number. When it exceeds it, then it um, shows that uh, steering lock warning. I believe there's an update to allow the steering lock a little bit more time to operate so it doesn't trigger the warning so easily. But before we go into the details of how to fix it, uh, here's the proof that we do actually fix it in the end. Here we can see turn on the ignition and the only thing light that comes up is just the standard ones showing when your next service is due. So if you go to BMW, it'll probably cost you a fortune. Some stories about them replacing the whole steering lock, which is unnecessary. Some people have stripped down the steering lock to uh, lubricate it. Uh, some people also report disconnecting the battery for 30 minutes or do a computer reset. Not convinced about that. The more official route is to get an OBD2 interface cable the correct software for your PC, plug it into the uh, system of the car and do a reset of the steering lock uh, systems. There is a little emulator board, which I'll put some links in the description for, which you can put on, basically you disconnect the steering lock and you plug in instead an emulator, which uh, mimics the operation of the steering lock, which means the electronic steering lock no longer uh, operates. So you have to disconnect it while the steering lock is disengaged. Um, and then the emulator board basically replaces the lock. The lock never works, doesn't really need it anyhow. And in fact, on later BMWs from 2008 onwards, they actually don't bother with their steering lock anymore, interestingly. So in order to fix this problem, we need the right interface cable. This is one I got from eBay. Uh, it came from China, I believe. Uh, which has a USB interface on it. Uh, it comes with a software disk and inside INPA you will find this install PDF file. So have a look at that, which is this file here. So it gives instructions on going through and installing the various programs that you need. Um, so make sure that you removed or uninstalled any previous versions of BMW software, INPA, EDIA, BAS, anything to do with BMW. Uh, reboot your machine and then run through these instructions. So I did find that where it says go to the disk one folder and run the setup file. Uh, this disk one folder actually I had to move on to the root C directory in order to get it to work. I suspect these long file names, particularly maybe my documents or something, not working. So I copied them over to C and there we are, disk one down here. And then ran the setup file then it successfully started loading and then asked for the location of the disk 2 um, folder shortly afterwards. Uh, so this is how it's far it's got so far. Some prompts coming up in German and if we go to the description uh, it says which modes to pick. So use mode already done and uh, this is the one parameter I'm kind blah 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 which is what it's uh, asking for now. So. We'll proceed with that. Next prompt, it says OBD. So we'll do that. Next prompt, Kide API trace, which is fine. We'll do that one. And just double check the IFH trace. And then the last one, comfort.ipo. Accept again. I guess we're just going to accept all these. And off she goes again. And then after a bit of installing, we get this message, which I guess means it's okay. Not speaking German. And then we get this. So I guess we'll say okay since it says succeeded. Succeeded. Press any key to continue. Try that. And 
Certainly on this one, I think it's a prompt to restart, so I guess we're going to have to do that. Maybe. Yep, off she goes. So the PC is rebooted, and then we'll go on to the next step. Step two, install inst prog exe. Let's try and do that. So next we go to running this inst program.exe under install step two inpa. Uh, I've actually renamed the folder, brought it directly under the C drive, just shortened it to avoid any problems I had earlier when the install files were under my documents. So hopefully this will now run. Let's see. Yep, that's certainly doing something. Try OK. Select English. We're basically following these instructions in that PDF file we saw earlier. Continue. Destination drive C. Please select the configuration program for UK. Don't think we can do more than one. Continue and the options here we want to activate all spare boxes not too many options on here so we'll just select those ones continue seems to have detected an old one despite uninstalling it previously so we'll say to delete it and continue and off she goes while we're waiting for that to install just show you where the cable is plugged in this is under the right hand side of the car, the UK driver's side. That's where the OBD2 port is located, that's where the cable plugs into, just next to the pedals there. And when I think when I originally plugged the cable in, I asked for a driver, and this is the installation directory that you need to point to when it asks for where the actual driver software is located. It was a while ago they did that, but that should be fairly obvious, uh, which should work okay. And now that installation has finished. We've gone to the step three run, and in fact, because there's quite a few of these instructions, goes on a little bit. I'm not going to go through each detail one, maybe just stop if there's any uh, problem. Uh, hopefully by the end of it, it should be all complete. Uh, some bits in the instructions about installing the hardware driver for the cable with some modifications that you've got to do on them. And if it's already installed to get to the device manager where you want to um, change its settings. So all these tabs under hardware, device manager. And under ports, here is the port, serial port com 14 in my case. And we go into port settings advanced and it says to change the port to com4 i believe let's see if we can do that com4 is in use ah. so we'll leave it on com14 see if that'll work the latency timer it says to change to one i believe yep and that is it and then it says to check this file to make sure it's uh, set up correctly inside it doesn't say where that file is but i can tell you it is under this path here and there's the file and open it up with a text editor i use textpad search for the word interface and you can see interface equals standard obd which is what the instructions say is required and also in the instructions, it says to go to this file, cwindowsobd.ini, open up your text editor, and you have to change this port to the port number that was set up for your hardware, if you remember that. Mine was uh, 14, so just make that modification. Save that file, exit. So having completed the installation instructions, then we should have some new folders appear on our uh, laptop. So the ZDIA BAS and this other one, as you can see, this one is the main listing of programs that are installed. I've got to say, far too many and far too confusing, but uh, the one for actually testing whether we've got communication or not, I believe, is this INPA underscore IPO. And this will enable us to actually test whether we've got communication or not. 
So at the moment, it's showing battery on, ignition off, which is correct. Turn the ignition on. Come on, press the button. Come on, car. And you see the, the ignition on the car is now actually on. And it's shown by the software showing on. So that shows that the cable is communicating to the car and the software is installed correctly talking to the port. Uh, so this version of IMPA does actually support the Mini over here. Shift F3. And actually when I tried selecting some of these jobs, let's uh, pick, let's say, body and then, for instance, steering column might be an obvious one. It tried to load, but then came up with identification area. So some unknown fault with the software. But since we're not going to use INPA, it's not too much of a problem at the moment. So we could add that. And the software that I believe we need is the toolset one, toolset 32, which is over here. ID, uh, EDIA Bass Tool 32. There we go. Okay, and in this program, we load a particular job. So we'll say load. And out of this long list, we need to choose cas.prg, which is there. Uh, once you've done it once, it remembers it in the list of jobs. So this time it is initialized, I believe, correctly. And out of the list of jobs, then we need to pick a job. So I've just got to look up. Stern ELV counter cast. Let's have a look so we can find it. Uh, out of this long list, these are the two jobs that we want to run. It happens to be at the bottom. Not sure whether that's because I tried running them before or not. So it's Stern ELV counter cast lush blah, blah. Stern EVL counter ELV lush blah blah. So, how do we run that? Double click this time. Oh no, here we go. Double clicking, then it comes up with results. Says job status okay. Okay, and now we run the other one. Double click on that one. Job status okay. So, has that made any difference? Well, if we now look what happens when we put the key in, turn the ignition on, we just get the normal indication of when the next service is due. So no warning, padlock and steering wheel. So that's how to fix that error. Um, so originally this was probably caused by a slightly uh, old battery. Uh, and I've replaced the battery as a bit of a rubbish system in these cars because with a battery that's still good enough to start the car, but slightly low voltage, steering lock motor works slightly slower and that uh, goes over a particular time limit which triggers a counter and when the counter gets to a certain number it triggers that padlock warning so resetting it with uh, the same old battery would probably be good for i'm guessing six months or so before the counter gets gets up to a particular value but now i've changed the battery i'm hoping that that error won't come up again so that is how to fix your um steering lock warning with the um, padlock and steering wheel um, all in red in my case warning. Okay, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you managed to get the software working correctly. Uh, there's a lot of instructions on the web from other different people, a lot of versions of this BMW software around. So I'll try and put a few links into the video description to help you. And I'm sure you, you'll find lots of other information on the internet about it. But this is how I fixed my Mini. Hope that helps. Cheers. Thanks for watching and bye.